Welcome, everyone. My name is Holly. I am one of the conscious agents here on the Reality Sandwich platform. And today I'm going to be chatting with Nick about psilocybin. Um, hi, Nick. Welcome. Uh, so let's uh, let's just dive right in. Um, what brought you to become interested in plant medicines? How did you learn about them? Let's let's start with the beginning. Yeah. So um, to be completely honest, I have never really dabbled with psychedelics uh prior to about i would say about five years ago um when i was younger i used to you know smoke cannabis and and uh do some recreational drinking and stuff but i was always kind of i liked the the straight and narrow and everything and i was like okay i'm just kind of doing my thing um over the course of the last few years you know um there were parts of my life from you know, many years ago that still kind of impacted my day to day and um, just kind of, you know, mentally, they, they were just kind of, there was like these little voices, like, you know, telling me, you know, whether it was like self-esteem related stuff, like, uh, you know, you're not good enough, you're whatever. And I just couldn't really figure it out. And, and I was like, you know, there's got to be something. I'm not one to just go to like see a psychiatrist and like or therapy and that stuff and take traditional medicines to make myself feel better so you know a couple of my friends recommended to me that i should try mushrooms so i was like oh that sounds pretty interesting so that's kind of where i where i started with it and the first time i did it it was the most amazing experience it was like every problem i ever saw in my life had just kind of you know come right in front of my face and I realized like, wow, that's not even that big of an issue. Why was I beating myself up over this, you know? And uh, yeah, that's what kind of started me on that. And then over the last, since I've been with my wife, she, so she's like really big into psychology and um, she's actually, she just graduated. She's working on her doctorate right now for, um, well, clinical psychology, but she's kind of balancing between a couple other things. But uh she's been really big on, on psychedelics and the impact to mental health. And, uh, so we started growing them probably about a year ago, close to a year ago, we started growing. We have like a little grow room in our basement. And so I've been able to kind of play with them a little bit more, like over the last year, take them more frequently and kind of, you know, take them more in like a responsible, not so recreational way, right. you know? That's so cool. that definitely like increases the connection with the medicine obviously yeah. because you're hands-on <laughs> um yeah when you see it grow like you just see like these little yeah. baby things popping out. yeah and then all of a sudden it's like you go down there and it's like they grow so fast so it's like right. one day they're this big and the next day they're this big and you're like pull those out I and we're done them. here okay <laughs> yeah. so well let's backtrack i want to talk about that first experience so yeah. you obviously were going into this not just like a lot of people in youth where it's like oh i just want to get high like you had a purpose yeah. and an intention behind wanting to experience what you had been hearing about these mushrooms offering. So tell me a little bit about that. Like, where were you? Who were you mm -hmm. with? How much did yeah. you take? Like what? So it was, it was kind of well? crazy. Yeah. So the, the first time was, it was really weird because I wasn't, it, it was like a kind of a dark place in my life. And I was like, I wasn't feeling good about much of anything. And I had this person who was a neighbor of mine. They told me, you know, you should read this book. And I don't know, have you ever heard of Eckhart Tolle? Yep. Yeah. So it was The Power of Now. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not like I when I sit there and read a book, I get really tired and I make it like a couple pages and then I pass out. So I got the the audiobook version of it. And he was talking about like the pain body, which is like that piece of you that certain things trigger, you know, like when somebody says a certain phrase and you feel it in your gut. And they're not intending to do that, but you're like, I want to punch not not punch i'm not a violent person but i just want to like tell this person to shut up and move along or whatever and so i was you know i was i was listening to that and i was like wow that's really that's crazy you know it's there's all these little things and i became really self-aware of when those types of situations were coming up and happening so i was talking it was with my neighbor doug and my other neighbor greg and I was telling them about it and they were like, man, you got to try psychedelics. And I was so nervous because like, really, truth be told, I'm like a super lightweight with everything. Like if I'm going to smoke a joint, I take two hits and I'm like, I'm good for like hours. That's it. 
And so I'm like, okay, we'll, we'll do a little bit. So we got some and we were sitting there and we're listening to seems like broken bells or some, you know, some, some really psychedelic trancey style of music. And I just remember sitting there and just all of a sudden it was like the whole room kind of just went quiet and dark, but like in a good way. And I noticed like things that I'd never seen before, you know, like textures, colors, everything. I was feeling really, really good. So my first time doing it, it was, I didn't do a lot. I think I did probably like what would be considered like a little baby dose. I don't know, a couple grams, a gram, something. Um, and it was like all three of us and, and we were just hanging out there and I realized like, you know, time was going by super slow and we were all laughing and having fun. And I thought about nothing else than being right there with them. And it was, it was really, it was really like an eye-opening experience if that makes sense. I mean, it was just really, it was like the first time um, up to that point where every thought in my mind just calmed down. It just like kind of silenced itself. And I was able to actually be physically present, mentally present in the moment with the people around me, look at them, see through whatever social faux pas or social like masks or whatever they had in place and kind of see everything for what it was. And like that combined with the book that I was listening to, <laughs> the book I was reading, um, it just, it totally changed the way I saw the world entirely, completely. And it just, it was really, it was a really good experience because like, I can honestly say from that moment forward, I just, I've never really struggled with the same issues. And I know it probably doesn't happen like that for a lot of people. And it could have been like my personal willingness to, you know, want to change something mixed with these other ingredients that I was, you know, kind of putting into the mix, but it, yeah, it changed everything. It just made me a happier, like more confident, more like just a better person altogether. This is like a, like a one-time experience. Like that was the first that just kind of like branched off a new section of your life from yeah. this one time. Yeah. It was like, everything just kind of shifted and I looked to the right and I'm like, okay, that's, that's the way I want to go. I'm done with all this other stuff. And And what's crazy is I didn't touch anything for three, four years after that. So it was like, you know, I, the same guys are like, Hey dude, you want to do shrooms again? And I'm like, no, nah, I think I'm good. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to reset whatever happened. You know what I mean? Like I don't want to rewind and end up, Oh man, it's gone. You know? So. So then that obviously, you know, having such a positive first experience, I'm assuming then, you know, now you're like marinating in it, but you said years had gone by. So what, what spurred you to then want to start growing and experimenting with other doses? Like how did that transition take place? Yeah. So, you know, a couple of, well, four years ago. So I guess that experience was a little longer than five. That, that was, you know, 2015. So yeah. I, wow. So it was closer to 10 years ago. So I met my, well, I've known my wife for a long time. We got together in 2020 as like a couple, we were good friends before that for a long time. And, uh, she was, you know, expressing her desire for, you know, pursuing the rest of her schooling and all that stuff. And um, we were just, you know, just having a lot of fun, just having a good time hanging out and stuff. And we would get into these conversations about, you know, like moods and feelings and, and all types of different things like that. And um, she's always been a huge advocate for psychedelics, for mental health. Um, she struggles with a couple things herself. She's a, she's a veteran. Um, so she has things like, you know, PTSD. She has, she was diagnosed with uh, borderline personality disorder when she was younger. And, you know, we kind of come from similar traumatic backgrounds, you know, so that's kind of like what we, what we clicked on. And so, you know, we moved to Colorado about two years ago. And one of the things that happened was right when we got here, well, while we were on our way here, we had a 27 foot U-Haul truck everything we owned got stolen. We were in Albuquerque, New Mexico. We went to sleep at an Airbnb. We woke up, I stepped outside and I looked around and I was like, everything's gone. Like, like the whole truck was gone? Everything, everything we owned up to that point. Oh moved out of a three bedroom house. We're moving to Colorado. Everything we owned was gone. So we like just hit a wall. It was like, boom. It was like, oh my gosh, what do we do? Like they, the police, like a couple months later, recovered a couple things here and there, but all of our 
you know, sentimental stuff was gone. And so we get up here and we find out that you're allowed to grow mushrooms at home. You can't sell them. You can't like do anything crazy. It has to be a certain amount and all that. So she's going to school at the time talking about psychology. She's, uh, she was starting to, uh, like, it's like a side project, help people like writing letters to people who are in prison for, you know, certain things. And we were just kind of dabbling in a lot of different things. Um, just, you know, to try to make people feel better and stuff. And so she was just like, we got to do mushrooms. We got to try to grow them. We got to do them, you know, like, cause when, when you kind of lose everything and that stuff kind of goes away, you're like, I feel like crap about this. This is like the worst feeling in the world, like literally the worst feeling in the world. But I know I don't want to feel like this. I know that, th that it's just material stuff and that all that, but you need like a little, push a little boost to kind of help you get back into your groove, you know? So we, you know, I went and bought like wheat pens and stuff. And I was like, eh, you know, I'm not really feeling that. So, um, she had the idea of mushrooms. And at first I was like, I don't know, like, I feel like we're going to get in trouble. <laughs> you know, I was being really kind of nerdy about it. Cause you know, I don't want to be that guy that my friends see on the news, like, Oh, we raided a house and they had like 20 pounds of mushrooms. Um, so we did all of our research and we started kind of like looking at everything and we just decided like, yeah, let's do it. And we started growing them. And as we were growing them, we were kind of thinking of ideas, like, what are we going to do with this? How can we, you know, um, kind of share this with people and whatever. And we ended up just drying out a bunch of mushrooms, like putting them in the little dryer thing. And, uh, we had a lot, like a ton, like freezer bags, like full. And we still hadn't done them yet. We hadn't eaten any of them. So one night she was about to go into surgery the next, it, well, we had to drive to Denver the next day, the next morning, but it was the night before we drove to Denver and her brother came over cause he was going to watch our, our dog and all that stuff. And uh, her brother. So just as like a little background on him, he is a former law enforcement guy and he wears those boots. Well, like he's like, Bruh. so he's like real stoic and, he's a hard nut to crack basically. So he came over and, and he's like, very, he's like, why don't we, let's eat some tonight. Let's, let's do it tonight. So keep in mind, we had like bags and bags. So I went to the store and what we were going to do is make some tea. And so I went to the store to buy some lemons and we get back and we start like cutting the lemons and stuff. And he's just sitting there with his hand in the bag, eating it like popcorn. And then my wife is like, eh, screw it. Let's do it. And then she starts eating it like popcorn. And I'm looking at both of them. And then, so I had like this little bowl in front of me like this that I was cutting the lemons into and her brother just took like a handful, dropped them into the little thing I was cutting lemons into. And we ate a ton, like so many mushrooms. I think like, I know you said something about five grams of mushrooms. This was like more, like more than that by a long shot, like life altering crazy roller coaster of mushrooms it was it was insane so yeah so i i know that this doesn't really answer the question that you asked per se but this was like the first time back for me after a long time of not doing it and i was like all right sure so we ate a lot of mushrooms and we sat down and i'm like oh gosh I, this is not going to be good so i sat on the couch and like my mental state was just like stress and we're watching, I think it was like, I know what you did last summer, something totally stupid. And we're watching that. And all of a sudden, um, do you remember what AI art looked like? Like two years ago, how everything looked like really rigid and kind of, you couldn't really make out what it was. The movie started looking like that for me. So I'm like, I'm like guys, I need to like step away for a moment. Cause I started feeling nauseous and like, I felt more queasy than good. So yeah, I just. I went into my bathroom upstairs and my, like it's next to my office. And I just like laid on the floor and had like the most, what I thought was the worst experience in my life. Like the worst. I was sweating. I was getting sick. I was talking to myself. I was lucky. I didn't have my phone on me. Cause I was like, someone needs to call 911 because I'm going to die. Like literally I'm laying on the floor. And as I was looking around my bathroom, my bathroom is clean. Like it's like as clean as anyone else's bathroom would be. 
and I'm looking around and I hear, I think I thought I heard, I don't know if it was really happening or not, but I thought I heard sirens going on. And in my mind, when I was in the bathroom, sitting on the floor, just completely out of my mind, um, I thought I was sitting in like a gas station bathroom and I'm looking around and everything had turned like gray, had moss growing on it. Like it was true visuals that I did not even think were possible. I thought people, when they said they had these visuals, they were like exaggerating and just being like handy about it. And then I sat there and I'm like looking around and I'm like, oh my gosh, I felt like I was in basically what it felt like is like when you go to like a skid row style, like neighborhood and you're sitting there and everything is like crazy. There's like police helicopters flying around, people doing drugs outside and like all this crazy stuff. In my mind, that's where I was. In reality, my neighborhood's beautiful. You know, it's like, it's like the most beautiful, friendly, like our backyard fences are three and a half feet high. Like, you know, all of our neighbors know each other. We're all good. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to, something bad's going to happen. And then I sat like that for a while and I went back downstairs. My wife tried to give me this little pill. I was convinced she was trying to poison me. It was like the most ridiculous. I'm like, oh my God, what are you doing to me? Why did you give me that stuff? And like, there's so much more to it than just those elements. Like I literally thought I heard the mushrooms that were in my stomach telling me things. Like it was crazy. I've never had that happen before. So and then, so keep in mind, like her brother is this stoic guy and he doesn't let anything show. And I'm the complete opposite. Like if I'm like not feeling right, I'm like, oh, I'm not feeling right, guys. This isn't good. You know, like, so we go down. He's he's a smoker. He smokes cigarettes. So he's like, guys, let's go outside so I can smoke a cigarette. So we went out there and he was smoking a cigarette. But while he's out there, he's like looking around and I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm making sure our perimeter is, our perimeter is secure. And I was like, what? I was like, what are you doing, man? Are you trying to trip me out right now? Like, we're not in like Baghdad or something. Like, we're in my garage. So he's doing that. And I, I'm like looking at him. I'm like, this dude is insane. Like, I'm just trying to figure him out. And then uh, long story short, it was like a whole night of that kind of stuff, of, of those kinds of like really bad experiences. And then I started coming down and we're sitting at the table. And all of a sudden, like the mood completely changed. Everything was chill. Everything was mellow. I look at my wife. I'm like, gosh, she's beautiful. You know, whatever. You know, sometimes you just look at people and you're like, what a beautiful person. And then I look at her brother and I was like, oh my God, he looks just like my wife. <laughs> you know, like it was, I was like, oh, this is so, I'm bugging out right now. So I started looking at him and then all of a sudden, like the facade of what he puts on is like, I'm this big stoic police guy just completely fell. All of that fell. And I'm talking to him and like, I'm seeing through that. And like, I know it sounds bad. And if he ever sees this interview, he's probably going to punch me. But um, I saw like a scared boy sitting at the table. This is a dude who's 38 years old, like, you know, cop. He's lived through it all. And what I saw was like this little dude sit at my table. It felt like I was looking at a child. And then so I started talking to him and asking him like deep questions. And, you know, we started talking about real deep things because he's the kind of person that you can't really talk to like that. Like he has his political opinions about stuff, but it's like, I don't, I don't have political opinions, so I can't really relate to him on that. So we're sitting there and I'm like asking him questions. And then all of a sudden, like out of nowhere, he starts crying. And like, this is a dude who like, I'm like, you're crying, dude. Like, wow. And he started talking about his dad and the reason why he like is the way that he is. Cause their, their dad passed away a couple of years ago and him and his dad were really close. And like, I had that same feeling at that point that I had during my first mushroom trip where everything just kind of mellowed out. And I was like, this is, this is where I need to be. Like, how do I get to this point every time I do mushrooms without going over, without going under, without like whatever it is, this is like the beauty of doing mushrooms is this zone. It's like, I don't, I don't know what to call it, but it's like one level of awareness in Goldilocks zone. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. So, and you know, from that moment on for the rest of the night, I think at that point it was so early, it was still like maybe midnight or one o'clock, but it felt like it was like the next day. Cause we started super early. We started like 5 PM and then, um, yeah. So then it was like that for the rest of the night, we had great conversations, like totally like broke out with her brother, you know, just had super amounts of appreciation for my wife. And, um, 
it like kind of put me back in that that good that good spot again you know that's that's a long trip like that's a pretty good that's a substantial amount of time especially if like the come down is just beginning at like midnight you know like yeah. you probably were high until well after the sun came up like <laughs> oh my god yeah it was so we had to drive to denver the next morning yeah and so like i'm like well i gotta try to get some sleep it, this was at like four four or five o'clock in the morning i'm like i'm gonna try to get some sleep and you know when you do mushrooms like you can't you can't sleep you can close your eyes but that's about all that's gonna happen Mm -hmm. So I think we ended up, we ended up leaving like later in the day anyway, but ended up getting some sleep at some point. But I remember in the morning going outside and like seeing like the, you know, the morning sun, like how it's just, you know, it's sunrise, the sun's not fully up yet. It's still like that morning and thinking to myself, like looking at my neighbors that are like pulling out of their driveways, going to work and stuff. I'm like, Oh my God, they have no <laughs> idea the journey I went on last night. Like you never know, you know, like, what goes on behind closed doors, you know? And it's like, wow. So, but yeah, it was, it was really, it was really an interesting experience. That's a big one. Yeah. Most people don't just like, you know, dig in and like go for the fistfuls. That's like a bold, that's it, a bold move. Yeah. It was super but. bold. And it's, and I think it's because of her brother, like he intimidates me a little bit, you know, yeah. like he's, he's a cool guy. And like, he's like, yeah, he's all about his music. Like he's, good at the guitar and stuff so i'm like i'm thinking to myself like okay he knows what he's doing you know he's he's an experienced guy my wife knows what she's doing she's experienced in that realm and i'm like the little baby guy trying to show off to the grown-ups you know i'm like okay here we go and i didn't think it was going to be as bad as it was until it initially hit when everything looked like ai art to me like literally looked like like someone pulled up the first version of mid journey and started going nick's make, make nick see all of this and I was like, this is bugging me out. I feel yeah, like I can see every pixel on the TV, you know? That's a weird, that's a weird experience. Yeah. yeah. I've had some similar ones where it's like, I'm in my backyard and all of a sudden the backyard is now some sort of crazy fractal map. And there's yeah. no way I can take another step forward because I don't know this terrain. I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah. not certain of what this is. Yeah. I can relate to that. Okay. So after that massive experience you know, I'm assuming, I, I would think that over the next, gosh, I don't know how long, like you'd be ruminating on this, like were there thoughts and um, revelations you were uncovering in like the days or weeks to come after that? Yeah, literally to this day, to this day. Um, so one of the big things that happened was, uh, so in our front entryway of our house, it's, we have like, our front door is kind of ornate and like it's, very, it's a fancy looking front door when you're looking at it from the inside, looking towards the front door. And then the, like, as you walk in, there's like this little room where we have, we call it like our dead celebrity room because we have pictures of like all these dead celebrities like Marilyn Monroe, Johnny Cash, like all these people. And we have, um, it's probably like 20 different famous people mug shots from like the 50s and 60s. So that night we're all standing in that area when we were tripping and like, I'm, I'm standing there and, uh, when you go down into our basement, so you're here like this, and then there's a railing with stairs that go down into our basement, and the railing is pretty ornate as well. So I'm standing there, and so going down to our basement, my wife is very, like, gothic-y, so we have this sign that says morgue, like, as you're walking down. So you're walking, it looks, it looks like you're walking into the morgue. So during my trip, I was sitting there thinking, and I'm like, it was – a weird time of the night. This was before everything got cleared and I was feeling good. I was like, Oh my gosh, we're dead. This is the funeral home. You know, I was like, this is the funeral home we live in. I'm, we're not even alive. This is not even a real experience. This we're just ghosts. And like, it was so bizarre, but every time I would walk downstairs, cause I have to walk through there every single day when I go from my office down to the kitchen and all that stuff. Every time I'd go in there, it just, I would remember like, this is what I thought was like a funeral home or a morgue or something. And it was just, it was very bizarre to get it. I'm not like that anymore. Like that was back in September, but uh, yeah, it was just, it was such a trip. And then, so a couple things, I guess that have really stuck with me since that last one is I'm really kind of obsessed with, you know, AI simulation theory, that type of stuff. Um, like, you know, I, I've been a fan of simulation theory for a long time. Like the root of 
reality? Is it simulated or is it like an organic thing that happens? And there, there were things that happened that night that like, you know, it made me kind of second guess, like, because if you would ask me before that, do we live in a simulation? I'd be like, yeah, we live in a simulation. I know it. I know it's a simulation. It just makes sense. But there were things that happened that night that were like, okay, so one of the big like threads that, you know, stuck with me was the universal consciousness that we were all part of a shared experience. You can't share an experience just by being physically there. You know, you have to, there's like a mental aspect to it or like a conscious aspect to it that makes it a shared experience. So I've thought a lot about that over like since the time of like just the nature of consciousness itself. Um, is it something where like as human beings were more like antennas tapped into that? Or is it something that actually exists within us? And it's been a question that I think I need to do some more mushrooms to try to, you know, figure out a little bit. But that that's been the one that's been the one thing. And I know it sounds a little weird and you know, some some people might be like, whoa, that's you know, why why would you think of that? Like, why would that be your takeaway? But like when you think about it, like just the fact of being a human being and being alive and this very moment in time, like it's crazy. Sometimes I think to myself, I'm a I'm a you know, I'm a human being who was born at like the coolest time to be alive ever. Um in the United States, which is like the coolest place, I think, personally. Like and I have like this pretty amazing life with people that I care about. And, you know, it's, it's like, and I'm like, what, what if I was born like a frog or something? Would I still have the same thoughts or like, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's hard to articulate, but I think that's, you know, my well, main takeaway. With, maybe with mushrooms, especially too, like just in their nature of how they grow, how mycelium grows how it yeah. webs underneath the earth and connects globally, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, it's it's not a far stretch to think that either if it's just under the influence of these substances or, you know, ruminating on them later to also see the connections between things like unity consciousness or these yeah. shared human experiences or what wiring do we have that's yeah. as connected as mycelium is in the earth? Like, I think that, that makes sense yeah. to me for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that's the thing. It's like mushrooms, um, they communicate. They communicate with other plants as well. Like they, they can tell a plant, like, don't grow here, grow over there, you know, or like like spread your seeds that way because this way is like whatever. Uh, we saw a whole documentary on that, and I was like just completely blown away. And because when we first started growing mushrooms, that's we got really into like I was researching everything. She was researching everything. We watched every documentary you can imagine. And uh, just trying to kind of get an idea of like what we're doing. And I didn't understand that, like how much fungi impacts everything, entire ecosystems, like fungi didn't exist. We wouldn't exist, you know, yes. and it's like an intelligent, it's not even a plant, it's a fungi. So it's like an intelligent thing. It's like an architect, you know, and it's so when, when you eat it, thinking about that with that in the back of your mind you're like oh wow so when i thought the mushrooms were talking to me and like i still to this day can say you know maybe they were they were communicating something like, you know, like firing something in your brain i mean we yeah. know that they have the ability to affect our neural pathways so yeah it's coming yeah. through with little whispers <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so it was it was it was a very cool it was very uh roller coaster experience like it was heavy duty and i didn't i was not prepared for it at all like i i know i talked to other people that are like into psychedelics like a lot and you know they talk about how they prepare for things before they happen and i did not do any of that it was like just go for the gusto chomp some down and then take whatever comes at you which in hindsight probably wasn't the best way to do it you know but well, it could also be argued, though, that it would take a lot of courage to, like, be able to approach a dose like that if you were, like, had all this time to think about it. Like, you maybe wouldn't have ever taken an amount like that if it was yeah. 
you had all these days in advance. Once you're looking at it, you're like, yeah, you know, actually, I'm just going to half this down. <laughs> I was just watching them and they're just like, psh, psh, psh. and I was like, if they can do it, I can do it. And I was like, I can't do it. No. Nope. <laughs> so <laughs> now that, you know, you are have continued your journey with mushrooms, like what's a more, like how often are you consuming mushrooms and what are these regular doses or exp- settings like? Like how do you interact with the mushrooms now? So we, we made these chocolates. Um, it's a very low dose. I, I don't know the exact dosage of each chocolate. They're little squares that my wife made. Um, and one, I'll, I'll take one like every three or four days and they're delicious and they make me feel really good. Uh, we also started some Amanita gummies. We started a little Amanita gummy thing. Um, I eat like four of those gummies a day. A lot of times I don't really feel them a lot, but I can tell there's a mood lift happening, you know, like, like, for example, we'll be sitting there talking, chatting about something and I'll just feel giggly and giddy. And and I attribute that to those gummies because I'm not a giggly and giddy guy. You know, it's just one of those things. I'm like, okay, I'm feeling good. I'm, you know, so I'll do, I, I do probably anywhere from two to four gummies a day. And then I'll do one of those chocolates every, you know, three, four days. Um, so it's a regular, it's a regular thing. Um, I will never do a heroic dose again in my life unless I absolutely need to. And unless I'm totally prepared for it, <clears throat> but yeah. Um, yeah, I'm good on that. <laughs> I'm good on that. That's, that's intense, but the little doses I love, they, they just, they help so much. They spark creativity. You know, I play guitar, I write music, I do all that stuff. And, um, there's it really does open up a totally different part of your brain creatively uh i used to think that you know we did that but weed's not even in the same ballpark as you know a microdose of psilocybin mushrooms psilocybin mushrooms just they have you thinking in like three steps ahead of where you would be creatively with weed so at least in my opinion it could be different for other people yeah that's a good way to put it um you mentioned amanitas which for anyone that doesn't know, that's not psilocybin, but it is a psychoactive mushroom. So do you have any opinion about how those differ in effect? Um, I, so when I first, when we were first researching the gummies, um, we were dealing with a lot of different, like, uh, companies that make them. And we were ordering a lot of different samples from a lot of different places. And some were really intense. Some were not as intense. Um, I've never seen any visuals. And I, I think when we were first trying out the gummies, I was, I, I think I had like a, I was on like kind of the wrong, I had the wrong idea of what they do uh, versus psilocybin. So there's a body high. There's like a very good body high that I feel when I, when I eat them. Um, They make me yawn a lot for some reason. Like if I'm sitting there and I eat too many of them, I'm not tired, but I have to yawn. Um, Overall, uh, one thing I have heard from a couple people is that if you eat too many of them, they can kind of make you feel uh, almost like dissociative from your body and personality. Like it can almost detach you from from where you're at. Um, but I haven't experienced that. That hasn't been my experience. My experience has been also low doses, you know, under 1500 milligram doses. And I love them. Honestly, they, they help me focus. Like my focus is really, really good with them. And like, I can't focus if my mind is altered at all. Um, I always go, Oh man, I want to go do something fun. Like, you know, I want to go, I want to go do this or that. But when I do the Amanitas, they, they definitely, they definitely help me focus throughout the day. So usually what I do, my regimen is like, I wake up in the morning, I do my morning coffee, all that stuff by about 10 o'clock. I'll usually have two of them. And then towards like the three to four o'clock hour lull in the day when I'm really starting to drag, um, I'll eat a couple more and they'll pick me up pretty good. Nice. Definitely a great option for people that don't know how to access psilocybin or who are just looking for an entry point, perhaps. Yeah. You can just buy them online. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And they're delicious and, you know, they're you do feel something and it's not like when you eat 
gummies that are THC or D9 or one of those other compounds and like where those kind of will bring up the, the paranoia and like the other feelings that some people don't like with heavy doses of those things. Um, it's like the perfect dose just to take you from feeling like, ugh, to feeling like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. I'm excited right now. You know? Nice. That's awesome. Well, thanks for sharing your story today. Is there, <laughs> is there any advice you'd want to offer to someone that's about to embark on their first psilocybin experience? Yeah. Um, don't do too much. Start small. And then if you're feeling good, then you can gradually eat more. You can always like trickle it out as you go along. Um, don't eat too much at once and be around people that you care about, that care about you, that you value. Don't do it around people that are going to make you feel bad in any way, because those emotions, at least with me, will surface immediately. They'll, you know. Fantastic advice. All right. Well, thank you for sharing.